the back to Eden garden method, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> Friends, welcome to Starry Hilder Off Grid and my back to Eden garden. And we're going to do a tour. I'm so excited. People have been asking about the tour and it's going, it's going to happen in just a second because I got to go bam, 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 bam. <laughs> I got so much bamming to do, you're not going to believe it. But before we get started, I want to show you a couple pictures and a little bit of footage one month earlier of this Back to Eden garden. You're not going to believe, no, you're not going to believe until you see the pictures, what it looked like four weeks ago. That onion in it is in. So here is a good example. We are about 50 to 60 miles south of our garden. And here's a, the typical garden right now. Typical garden, 60 miles south. And you can see so much smaller than our Back to Eden garden. Isn't that incredible? Well, there's the celery. There's the cabbage. I see. Did I not tell you you're not going to believe it? This, it's exploding. And it is already ahead of the people who live 50 miles down state from us. So let's, let's take a look here. Right now, you can see, like this area here, it's just, it's just swarming. It's squished together. Because not only do we do the back to Eden gardening method, but we also implement succession planting and high intensity planting. And this is, this is a great area to showcase that. Potatoes? Is Mr. Hilder not the potato man? I mean, this guy blows everybody away on YouTube when it comes to potatoes. We, we have a potato video uh, queued up and ready to go. And actually, you're going to love it because we did a real potato video. Yeah, we took our potato experiment from five years ago. Yeah, we, we've, we've tried them all because we were like you. We wanted to find the best method. So we tried tires. We tried cages. We tried all of that. But the proof here is in the pudding what really worked. And Mr. Hiller is going to talk about his mounding method and how it has just given us outstanding potatoes. But look at that. And then I got to showcase the peppers because, you know, we're always about the bam with the peppers and the bam bam with the peppers. <laughs> and if you look, the peppers are, look at, they're kind of tiny right now, even though we are getting fruit. And I have seen a lot of gardens lately and in this area and downstate. And our peppers by far, everything in our garden is way past uh, everybody else's and it's and it just simply is uh, because once we plant our plant in this back to Eden garden It may take uh, say a month to catch up, but when it does it explodes It just it just explodes and then it bypasses everybody else's And here are the peppers on the other side of the garden and I want you to keep in mind the we really only had warm weather the last four weeks we had such a cool spring and it was so unusual. So when you look at these peppers, you may be thinking, jeepers, Starry, they really don't look that big. But considering only four weeks, four weeks, and this is the growth that we are getting of Canada. We don't have a long growing season. We, we aren't in an area where we should have big peppers. But I'll tell you what, you come back here in one month, and these peppers will be as big as the ones in California. No lie, you've seen the videos before on the pepper plants. You won't disappoint me, will you? No, you won't. And the tomato plants, I can actually say, bam, 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 bam. Because look at these. These are, they're huge right now. And although the, the tomatoes, there they are, they're not ripening yet. I tell you what, the fruit is on the vine. Look at the stalks on these things. Can you see that? These are so healthy, lush and green, and they are just exploding. And yes, they are, 
They're way past knee high. They're, a lot of these are already hip high. As I'm pointing out a lot of our crops, I'm gonna stop and just answer this question because this comes up a lot. People ask us, do you ever rotate those plants in your garden? Is there a need? And I wanna explain this real quickly because it's important to understand this. We don't rotate. We don't worry about rotating. Even though the tomatoes now are in a new spot this year, the only reason why we put them in the new spot was simply so that we could have better access to picking the tomatoes. Because when you do the back to Eden garden method, the soil doesn't get depleted. It doesn't get worn out. So you don't really have to rotate. And the reason being, and I'm just gonna come over here and show you the soil. So as I brush away, the layers, the layers, the layers of our wood chips. And we get down to the soil. Look at this. That is beautiful soil. That is beautiful soil. And you know, the magical ingredient that maintains and maximizes the soil health is actually the microorganisms that are living in the soil. That's why we don't have to rotate. You know, we've got bacteria in here, fungi in here, protozoa in here, and even little microscopic roundworms called nematoids. Yep. And what happens between the plant, which has a rhizosphere, that's what it's called, the rhizosphere, uh, that's the plant's root, and, and the soil, they cooperate between each other. And that rhizosphere ultimately is responsible for allowing the plant to absorb the nutrients in the soil in which it grows, never gets depleted. It's, it's a whole living environment. It's a beautiful thing. And that is assisted and basically created by layering and using those wood chips. Pretty cool. Now I know a lot of people are already harvesting their onions, but look at how well ours are doing. Remember, we, are, so we have a very short growing season. And when I am showing you something like our beautiful onions, and people have already harvested them, it's because they have a longer growing season. We just got our onions in a mere four weeks ago. And already we have outstanding growth. Our peas are exploding. Look at that. Our peas along with our, our, our oh, what are those? Those are, those are beans, our pole beans. And then, you know, we do a lot of succession planting. So I have all of these. Right next to that patch, I've got fresh kale. And actually, this is incredible. I just threw this seed out a week ago. And look at this. A week ago. I'm not lying. I just threw it out. And there you go. It was a dead spot. And now it's growing. And in this end of the garden, we just have a hodgepodge of our viney plants. And, and a lot of the times, we'll just, we'll just put a put a seed in the ground and just let it go and boop, it pops it just sprouts but you'll also see like oh here's a rogue potato plant oh and here's a rogue <laughs> strawberry it's just the whole floor is filled with produce and we love it really do a drum roll for this drum roll drum roll <laughs> drum roll <laughs> no drum roll well okay envision this in your mind there's got to be a drum roll because I'm going to show you the Back to Eden Garden slide. Remember the slide? Well, here's the picture of it. Ta-da! And there is the man who saved the Back to Eden Garden. And Mr. Hiller's pointing out how far back was it? It was... Well, from over by that last tire over there. Came like Look at this. that. Came in. And that is somewhere. where the whole slide was. And all the way over to where those rocks are. And then, woof, off the edge. And look at how beautiful the grasses are coming up now. And we uh, used some of the tires. And Mr. Hilder put some rocks there. We built up that, he built up that wall. And it's just, it's gorgeous. He saved the Back to Eden Garden. Thank you, Mr. Hilder, for saving the Back to Eden Garden. Okay, we got to continue on our tour, but isn't that great? And, and when we talk about our tires, actually, I want to show you real quickly. In our tires, because this is kind of a, this is kind of a, a erosion control right now, I've got sweet potatoes. You know where I got these? South Homestead. And when they arrived, ooh, they didn't look like they were going to make it. They looked pretty bad. But as soon as I got them in the ground, after about two weeks, 
they started coming back. So thank you, Danny and Wanda. We're gonna do, we gotta do a collaboration to uh, showcase their potatoes, their sweet potatoes, and how this is really working with our back to Eden Garden method because they don't use the back to Eden Garden method in the South because they got termite problems. Here, no termite problems, but the proof definitely is in the pudding. We saved those sweet potatoes and they're looking gorgeous. But look at, look at, I've got cantaloupe, I've got watermelon, and, and they're, it's outstanding. And then in this area, we have implemented, look at this, look at this, look at, look at, I got tiny, tiny pickles right now. We have implemented a terraced type of gardening. See, oh, look, look, these are getting ready to pick. And that is just one of the other alternative ways that we garden here to utilize space. So this terraced area really gave us some extra garden space. And you can see, we just leave things naturally. We didn't dig up all the sod. The sod actually helped uh, keep the, the beds that we created, you know, from eroding. So we kept it very natural. But here's, here's a starry and Mr. Hilder, Hilder garden failure because we have failures too. What we noticed in this terraced area, um, a whole row of nothing, nothing, nothing. You see, we have, we have gorgeous, uh, you know, cucumbers and zucchinis and here, nothing. And so we just came over here and we're like, you know, what's the deal? Is it the soil? So we're digging down and, and the soil looks really good. We got the wood chips on there. And, th and then we were digging, digging in here and oh, see, there's the, there's the seed. Now why this seed isn't popping? I think we may have had some bad seeds. So it isn't always a bed of roses. Sometimes we That's do popping. have, it is popping now, but we have had some failures. And I just wanted to point that out to you friends that, you know, it happens. Sometimes you get a bad ba a bunch of seeds. Now this row down here isn't as big as the ones on top simply because I think it was the seeds. The seeds popped so much later and we kept waiting and waiting and waiting. And then finally, now, now they're open and, they, and they're doing quite well. But there you go, it happens. And then last but not least, the spot right next to the house, which we turned into a permaculture back to Eden showcase. <laughs> and simply all we do in this spot is Absolutely nothing. Nope. Every year I never know what's going to come up. We've got sunflowers in here. We've got chives in here. We've got different types of herbs. We've got parsley. we got cilantro. we got strawberries. We have, uh, oh, what else do we have here? I mean, you, you just look. It's an abundant. My peonies came in. I've got some beautiful daisies. I've got some medicinal herbs in here. It's just a great showcase. And the whole floor of this is 100%. Look at these wood chips. Haven't touched these wood chips for years and years and years. Well, my friends, thanks for coming along with us on our very first Back to Eden Garden Tour on our off-grid homestead. And here's one more thing. Keep coming back because I will be producing more videos about the Back to Eden Garden method. And the method really is, really is a recipe that needs to be followed. Paul Gauchy, the originator of the Back to Eden Garden Method, has a great website where he explains how to layer, why it's no-till, why there's less watering, uh, what to put on it, and why. And it's really important that you get it because what's happening is so many people are jumping on the Back to Eden bandwagon. And that's awesome. But... They're uploading videos and they're not doing the method 100% the way it should be. And then what happens is you've got issues like pests or you're watering a lot or you're weeding a lot. There's something wrong when all those things are happening mm -hmm. uh, that are causing them concern. And if you have any questions, throw one up there and we'll see if we'll do a video on it. But in the meantime, I'm going to close with a beautiful scripture because the Back to Eden Garden really is about God's creation and allowing God to do what he does best, create. <laughs> but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord.
God bless my friends, and we'll see you next time.